so we're coming along nicely guys so 21 stated the simple interest on 800 dollars for three years is 54 dollars what is the rate of interest per annum so remember our formula for simple interest is simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time and all of that is divided by 100 so our simple interest in this question is $54. So it is 54 is equal to the principal, which is $800, multiplied by the rate which we're trying to find, multiplied by the time of three years, and all of that is divided by 100. And then we just transpose to find R to make R the subject of the formula. So it becomes 54 multiplied by 100. And all of that is divided by 800 multiply by 3 equal R. So 54 multiplied by 100 is 5400 and that is divided by 800 multiplied by 3 which is 2400 and that is equal to R so this is 2.25 percent equal R and 2.25.25 is the same as a quarter so it is 2 and a quarter equal R and that is our percentage so our answer is C. So 22 states. Mary invested $200 for three years at 5% per annum. John invested $300 at the same rate, meaning the same 5%. If they both received the same amount of money in interest, for how many years did John invest his money? So if I realize I gave you everything for Mary so you can find the interest for Mary and that same interest that you receive for Mary is what John received as a question stated. So using our same formula, simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time and all of that is divided by 100. So we're trying to find here the simple interest, the interest that Mary received so the simple interest is equal to her principal the money that she invested that is the principal multiplied by the rate five percent multiplied by the time three years and all of that is divided by 100 so simple interest is equal to so we can cancel the zeros from the 100 with the zeros from the 200 to leave us with two multiplied by five multiply by three to make it easier since we're in the exam without calculators so it's two fives ten and three times ten give us thirty dollars so the simple interest on this money that mary invested is thirty dollars and the question stated that they both received the same amount of money in interest so john received the same interest at John's simple interest on the $300 that he invested is $30. The only thing that made a difference is the amount of time that they invested the money for. So now we need to find time in the equation for John. So simple interest is equal to the same principal times rate times time and all of that is divided by 100. So the simple interest being the same $30, hope you're following me guys, so the same $30 and his principal which was $300 as the question stated, multiply by the rate of 5%, the question stated that in the rate is the same and the time that we're trying to find and all of that is divided by 100 so what we need to do now is make t the subject of the formula so it becomes 300 30 dollars sorry 30 dollars multiplied by 100 and all of that is divided by 300 multiplied by 
5 and that is equal to time so it is 3000 divided by 1500 and that is equal to time so 3000 divided by 1500 is two years and that is the amount of time that John invested his money for so our answer here is B so 23 8 a square so in doing this you have to remember that both the a and the 8 is squared as they're both in the bracket so it should be 8 I'm just breaking it apart so it will be 8 multiplied by 8 and 8 8 is 64 as I know the Caribbean of the North timetable from here in primary school and a multiplied by a gives us a square so our answer is 64 a square and our answer here is D 24 now see we are coming along nicely maximizing our marks on the exam so 24 states negative 8a multiplied by negative 3b so I'm going to break it apart again multiply numbers by numbers then letters by letters so it is negative 8 multiplied by negative 3 and that is equal to remember a negative times a negative gives you a positive number so negative 8 multiplied by negative 3 gives us positive 24 and a multiplied by b gives us a b and our answer here is 24 a b so our answer is d so guys it's just about breaking apart stuff putting it down to its simplest possible way of working and maximizing your marks and 25 so guys we're moving along nicely don't allow this long equation to scare you any at all you can do it as i've been saying just break it apart and solve it nicely so first what we'll be doing is five we'll be multiplying these outside numbers by what is in the bracket so five multiplied by this first bracket and negative two multiplied by this bracket so it is 5 multiplied by, so expanding the brackets, so it's 5 multiplied by 2x plus 5 multiplied by negative y plus negative 2, we're now on to the second part of the equation, so it is negative 2 multiply by 3y plus negative 2 multiply by negative 5x so now we have 5 times 2x give us 10x plus 5 multiplied by negative 5 Multiply by negative y to give us negative 5y plus negative 2 multiply by 3y to give us negative 6y and negative 2 multiply by negative 5x to give us 10x. So now we group or like terms it becomes 10x plus 10x and remember a positive times a negative right here would give me a negative 5y and a positive times a negative right here would give me a negative 6y and then would we'll have so it's 10x plus 10x to give me 20x and minus 5y minus 6y to give me negative 11 y so my answer is 20x minus 11y which is d so 26 3x squared multiplied by 2x cubed and i hope you really got 25 guys let's continue to practice so even if similar questions come you can do it so 26 for 26 there's a bit of a laugh indices 
involve and law of indices stated that if two terms have the same base which in this case is x so it's the x square and x cube once you have the same base and are to be multiplied together the indices are added so i'm going to break it apart like we've been doing before so it is three multiplied by two three times two is six so now we have x square multiplied by x cube and what love indices stated that once two indices are going to be multiplied and once you have the same base we add them so we get x raised to the fifth power so our answer is six x raised to the fifth power so our answer here is a so if you need to you can just revise law of indices and look at other examples so 27 if mn is equal to that equation then 5 3 is equal to so what this is saying is that wherever you see m you will put 5 and wherever you see n you will put 3 in this equation right here so i'm going to it will be square root so this is it so it's square root is equal to this a so square root 5 multiplied by 3 which is m multiplied by n minus n square and n is 3 so it becomes 3 square so we're looking at the square root of 5 multiplied by 3 which is 15 minus 9 which is 3 square gives you the 9 so it's equal to the square root of 6 as 15 minus 9 is 6 so our answer here is a so 28 if 50 minus 3x is equal to x minus 26 then x is equal so what we're doing is solving for x right here so we're going to make x the subject of the formula so it's 50 minus 3x equal to x minus 26 so now we have 50 plus 26 is equal to x plus 3x and that is a 76 is equal to 4x which is 76 divided by 4 is equal to x so we'll move the 4 from across the right to put it to the left and it now is dividing so it's 76 divided by 4 equal x and our answer is 19 is equal to x so 28 is d question 29 if p is equal to m squared divided by 2 minus m where m is equal to negative 3 then p is equal to so what you're doing guys is wherever we say m will be replacing it with negative 3 from the question so p is equal to negative 3 square and that is divided by 2 minus negative 3 so p is equal to negative 3 square becomes 9 as remember negative times a negative gives you a positive number and that is divided by 2 plus 3 and we get the plus sign remember that a negative right here or the minus sign from the original equation multiplied by the negative from the 3 becomes positive so it becomes 2 plus 3 so p is equal to 9 divided by 5 there's no need to simplify it any further as we see 9 divided by 5 as one of the answers so we're moving along nicely guys so 30 state althea saves x dollars so althea saves x dollars each month but in june she saved four dollars more than so the four dollar right here is referring to addition so it's the four dollars is being added to what her savings usually was and then the question went to say she saved twice her regular amount so twice right here is referring to multiplication so she saved twice her regular savings so regular savings 
is X dollars. But she saved twice her regular savings. So that is 2 multiply by X dollars to give us dollar 2X. But then remember it says she saves $4 more than. So now we will have $2 X plus the $4 which is more than a regular salary so our answer is d so it's all about reading and interpreting and understanding what exactly the question is saying and writing down as you go along to ensure that you have the right steps so 31 3 a multiply by that first bracket and negative b multiply by the second bracket so what we'll be doing as we did with the previous question that was similar to this one we'll be expanding the bracket so we'll be doing 3a multiplied by a then 3a multiplied by 2b so it is 3a multiplied by a plus 3a multiplied by 2b plus negative b now onto the second part of the equation negative b multiplied by 2a plus negative b multiplied by negative 3b so it is 3a multiplied by a to give us 3a square plus 3a multiplied by 2b to give us 6ab plus negative b multiplied by 2a gives us negative 2ab plus negative b multiplied by negative 3b to give us a positive so a negative times a positive to give us a positive 3b squared. So it is 3a square and then right here a negative positive times a negative would give us a negative right here so it will be 6ab minus 2ab to give us 4ab plus 3b square and that is our answer and that corresponds with b so b is our answer here so 32 which of the following represents the equation of a straight line and if you remember from our 2013 paper the equation of a straight line is y equal to mx plus c so we need to see which one of these equations is written in the same format and the only one that is written in this format is c so guys this is about knowing simple theories like that and you will indeed be successful in your exams so 33 if f of x is equal to that equation then f of negative 5 is equal to so what we'll be doing is wherever we see x we'll be substituting it with negative 5 so it's f of x is equal to x square minus x minus 1 so f of negative 5 is equal to negative 5 square minus negative 5 minus 1 so f of negative 5 is equal to five, negative 5 square 5 5 is 25 and that's a negative 5 and remember negative as we've been saying times a negative gives you a positive so it's 25 and then this minus sign from the equation multiplied by the negative from the 5 gives us a positive so it becomes plus 5 minus 1 
So f of negative 5 is equal to 25 plus 5 is 30, 30 minus 1. So f of 5, as we can see the answer now, f of negative 5 is equal to 29. See how easy peasy that is, guys. So 33 is b. So 34. The arrow diagram above represents a function. Which of the following best describes the function? So as I stated in 2013, I provided an explanation there. So what we're trying to do is find the sequence. So what operation is being performed on x to result in y? And that is all the question is asking you to do. So you can look at the answers and try to figure it out or you can work it out yourself. So what you're seeing is that 3 is being added to all these numbers in x to produce the result in y. And you can work it out to ensure that your answer is correct. So 34 is A. Question 35. Using the graph above, the values of x when y equal negative 1 are. So negative 1 is exactly where I place this red circle. So should you extrapolate and go across to where negative 1 meets these lines on the graph and then extrapolate up to the x-axis, the points that you get on the x-axis is the answer. So should you have the physical paper in front of you and do it, you'll realize that. So this is where negative 1 from y-axis meets the graph and when you extrapolate up to the x-axis, you'll get the point right here and that will be equal to 2.2 and if you do the same on the other side, you will get a negative 2.2 so our answer here is D so 36 what is the gradient of the straight line so another gradient question guys and as we know from above y is equal to mx plus c so what you need to do is arrange this formula in this same format so 2y is equal to minus 3x minus 8. So we need to make y the subject of the formula. So y is equal to minus 3x minus 8 and all of that is divided by 2 as we're now moving the 2 from the left hand side carrying it to the right hand side. So both Both numbers on the right hand side is being divided by 2. So it is minus 3x divided by 2 and 8 divided by 2. And remember that it is m in our equation that is equal to gradient. So our gradient is minus 2 minus 3 over 2. So our answer is B. 37. Which of the following does not, not, not represent the graph of a function? So you would use the vertical test here where if a vertical line passes through the graph only once, then it is a function. So therefore, we're looking for the one that is not a function. So anyone where the, ver where the vertical line passes through the graph more than once, then that is not our answer. So imagine that this is our vertical line. As you can see, this vertical line, no matter where on the graph, only passes through once. So therefore, this is a function. B, same vertical line. As you can see, this vertical line only passes through the graph once. No matter where on the graph, you should do it it only passes once so b is also a function now let's move to c vertical line so you're seeing one you should cut the line one time there and cut it again two so c is not a function not a function and should you do it with d you'd realize that 
vertical line coming through, coming through. No matter where on D, it will only cut the line once. So our answer is C. So all you need to do is revise vertical line test and horizontal line test. So we're coming along nicely, guys. Coming down, maximizing our marks to 38. The diagram above shows the line PQ. The gradient of the line PQ is given by. So guys, gradient is equal to rise over run or y axis divided by x axis. And if you're using the rise over run, which is known widely, rise is equal to the y axis numbers and run is equal to the x axis numbers. And always remember that when writing coordinates, so these coordinates that are written at point P and Q, remember that coordinates are written first x axis then y axis so a is x axis and b is y axis from point q c is x axis and d is y axis so it would be using rise over run it would equal to b because remember rise is the y-axis number so it would be b minus d divided by a minus c and that is our answer so for 38 our answer is d So it's B minus D divided by A minus C. So 39, the volume of a cube of edge 10 centimeter is, so remember volume is edge cube. So it is 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10. And that is equal to 1,000 centimeter cubes. So our answer here is D. That is an easy one mark. Guys, you're coming along nicely. You can do it. You can do it. So question 40. How many kilometers will a car travel in T hours at a rate of V kilometer per hour? So remember our formula for speed. So it is speed is equal to distance divided by time and it's a how many kilometers so that is asking us for a distance well a car travel in t hours so our time here is equal to t hours At a rate, rate speed, so speed here is equal to V kilometers per hour. So now what we are trying to find is distance. So we are rearranging the formula. So distance would be equal to would be equal to speed multiplied by time. So distance is equal to V kilometers per hour multiplied by T or time in hours. And as you can see, it's VT or in case of the answer, it was the other way around, TV. So guys, you are doing wonderful. You are doing great and we're just moving along nicely.